what's up divas and divos it's your girl so you guys already know what time it is it is real talk wednesdays and first of all i'm going to start off with this i have been to the dentist today okay and i have three new teeth in the front okay so for the past few weeks i have had temporary teeth and um no one knew because you really couldn't tell but i did get them removed today and i also went and had two teeth pulled in the back so i actually have a gauze in my mouth right now and my teeth are like killing me right now well like my gums are really really hurting so i do apologize for that and yes you guys i am rocking like some pink hair okay this is a unit that i made um Honestly, I made this a minute ago, like a minute ago. I think like back in probably like, I want to say like January, um, the hair was sent to me by West Kiss Hair and it was all platinum and the color was supposed to be a salmon color, a salmon color by, um, Eon Colors, Color Brights and the color of the box was like a peachy orange and the hair came out all this color. Okay. So this bright pink costume Halloween like color and I had to basically strip the color out of it by using vitamin C pills and the dandruff shampoo, okay, and hot, hot water. So I had to do that, and all of the color did not come out, but it did leave the roots like a rose pink color, okay? But the one thing that I'm not really too fond about with their frontal is that it's not like very see-through like that. It gives off like this yellow tone. As you guys can see right here so I had to basically do like a flip over I can't really put a part in it because if I do you're gonna see the lace is more or less like a platinum blonde yellowish tone so I really wasn't too happy with the lace that's the reason why I just put the wig down and just walked away from it because I just couldn't deal with it and I just decided yesterday let me try this out again and I'll just restyle it a different way um, I can't have a part or anything like that so I'm just gonna do it like this the one thing that I don't really like is that the fact that my eyebrows are dark, they're black, so it doesn't really go with the hair, but the hair did come out nice. It's been through a lot, you know what I'm saying? Um, you guys can only imagine the shit that it's been through. So I do like it, but I wasn't too fond of the actual lace, but you know, there's a way to work around it, you know? You have to just do certain things. You can't even leave any scalpage out because that's what it is. But I did do a video applying it. And this time I applied it with the new fake, the fake got to be glue gel. Bam. Okay. This is by Walmart, the Equate version of a got to be glue. So I found this as I was just in the hair aisle and it was sitting right next to the got to be glue. And I looked at it. It didn't say comparable as if they wanted to say comparable so i tried it out you know i tested it in the store and it kind of was like the same consistency half the price and all of that good stuff walmart does have other brands that um are equate and it, on those other brands they do say comparable to such and such brand but for this particular one it did not say that and i'm not sure if it has anything to do with the company in general but this works like just like got to be gel i've had this wig on for a day just by using this now would i use this on a normal day basis no because i still do like to use like my mousse and my hairspray because i just don't want all that stuff on my wig or on me but i wanted to give it a try um just so that you guys can see just so that you guys can see what the um you know what it's like how it works if it's kind of like the same as the um the actual original brand got to be gel. So, if you see me get up, I have to go get another gauze. But we're gonna really get through this real quick because it is like dumb hot in my room. I hate when it gets hot outside in general because my room gets so freaking steaming hot. I have central air, I have a ceiling fan, and I also have my oscillating fan. But I'm thinking I'm just gonna turn the ceiling fan off because I do notice that in the winter time when I have the heat on that it generates heat so that may be something that I might just want to turn off because I'm not seeing it generating any coolness a girl about to go and get one of those portable air conditioners because everywhere else in this house it's cold and cool and in this particular room it's freaking bloody fucking hot okay so I'm not too freaking thrilled about being in my room I try to avoid being here as much as possible unless I need to go to sleep and 
yeah, that's about it. So we're gonna get into this real, um, this real talk real quick because, like I said, it is super hot in here, um, and also that my mouth is really hurting. So please do excuse me. So we're gonna get into this real talk. If you need a real talk video about yourself, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line "real talk" so that way. I can get right to it. And now is the time for us to go get into this real talk. I, don't, I think that was all I had to talk about. Oh, okay. For the video, I will have the video up this week. Hopefully, I'll have it up for you guys today, meaning later on this afternoon, evening. So, just check on my channel for that. But it will be up this week. Hopefully, I'll get around to editing it um, in the evening. Huh? 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 What? Yeah. Right, you guys. Hey, April. You can call me Angela. First off, I just want to say that you are my favorite YouTuber. I never miss Real Talk, and I enjoy your family blogs so much. I'm a part of Team Hashtag. I am a part of Hashtag Team Mumsy. I love your try on hauls with Nay, your wig sling videos with Tati, and Tiki Man surprise appearances. I hope you're comfortable because this is a long one. I'm so sorry, Diva. First of all, Angela, thank you for being, um, for, thank you for allowing me to be your favorite YouTuber. And she hit it right on the nail with everybody. So, you know what I'm saying? My sister Alicia on my dad's side and I are not talking or not speaking at the moment, which really hurts because we are so close as children. We were so close as children. It was me and her against the world. I was her little sister, but I was also her protector. I was in college a few years ago, but I had to drop out because Alicia was addicted to drugs and went to jail for five years. And, had, and I had to take custody of two of my nieces and nephews when I was 21. Fast forward, she got out of jail and stopped getting high, so I decided to give her custody back of her babies and move on with my life. When she came home from jail, she seemed to pull away from me. She treats her friends like family and me like an outsider. And I truly don't know why, especially since I always have been there for her. Not so I could brag or throw it in her face later, but simply out of love. I never judged her or kicked her while she was down. I always defended her and even beat a few asses when people thought it was okay to talk shit about her when she was getting high. April, I grew up in the hood and I love where I come from, but I wanted to give my own children a better shot of life. I fell upon hard times and I asked my children's other aunt, Natalie, Natalia, on my mother's side, to look after them for two months while I got my affairs in order. I asked her because she only had one child, while my sister Alicia already had four of her own, and I didn't want to overwhelm her with my three. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life, but we made a deal. Natalia would look after my children for 60 days, and I would find a home in a good neighborhood. When the 60 days was up, she would move in with me and my kids, and I would help her out while she found a job and a place because she also wanted to get out of the hood. I slept in my car and worked two jobs, 18 hours a day, while going to school online and maintaining a 4.0 GPA. Even though I wasn't in the same town as my children, we talked daily and video chatted often. I had tracking devices on their phones, so I always knew where they were at all times. I spoke to their teachers weekly, and I also arranged for their school to call me first and foremost if anything had ever happened. I sent money bi-weekly for clothes, haircuts, food, school supplies, and everything else. My children's grandmother on their father's side is a mean, arrogant bitch who looks down upon everyone who doesn't live their life the same way that she does hers. She was offended that she didn't know what I was going, what was going on with my children, and she made up a lie saying that the school called her and said that they were going to call Child Protective Services on me. Even though the school never even had her number on file. Well, she told my sister Alicia this. And instead of asking me what was going on, I feel like my sister took that as an opportunity to kick me while I was down. She called me all type of bitches and a bad mother, which really hurt my spirit. She also accused me of thinking I was better than her just because I wanted to move out of the hood and finish college. I tried to be humble and not respond because I was going through enough shit and I didn't want to deal with the negativity because I was just focused on getting my children back. So I just blocked her on every social media and from calling me. I did what I said I would do, found a place and got my kids back in 51 days and lo and behold, their grandmother texts me phone talk, my phone talking about she always knew I could do it. I ignored and blocked her ass as well. 
My sister had a baby a few weeks after I moved into my place. Since I had blocked her, she called me from someone else's phone. I picked up and she said I had your nephew. I was still hurting from what she said to me, so I told her that I didn't give a fuck about anything that was going on in her life and hung the phone up. I love my nephew and I had my brother send me pics, but I was not messing with my sister at all. I feel like I am owed an apology and I am not going to allow her to just push her shit under the rug like she always does. She never takes responsibility for what she says or does to me, no matter how much it hurts. And whenever we have disagreements, I always have to be the bigger person and reach out to that bitch first. It has been a few months and my aunt called me and asked me to unblock my sister because she said she wants to talk to me. Should I unblock her and hear what she has to say or just say fuck it, keep it moving? Thank you for your time. P.S. I also want to thank you for that lash video you did a few years ago under the lashes. That's the only way I do it. And I always get compliments. You are the best, Diva. Keep doing your thing. Much love. Okay, first of all, girl, thank you for recognizing that under the lash video, Angela. Because um, when I did that video, I had to basically disable the comments. Because <clears throat> people were saying all types of things like, you know, it'll... That's, that's wrong, you shouldn't do that, that looks gross, you're going to hurt your eye, etc, 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 okay? And it's so crazy because now, like last year, why do I see people on YouTube doing this shit? Like, where do we do that? Okay? First of all, before I even get into this, I want to, when she said under the lash video, I want to say this. I was taught that technique from my girl love kisses 99 and you guys know that I have said in many of videos that I was upset with her I wasn't speaking to her blah 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 and then in most more recent videos I just basically said how you know I want to reach out to her I don't feel like I was woman enough to reach out to her um, and see what really happened between our friendship I just felt like I assumed that her Instagram pictures or messages was like in reference to me and she basically she was throwing shade and I basically say, you know, this is my friend and I still love her and I will always love her and I really need to grow some balls and be able to reach out to her so that I could be a woman enough to find out what happened with our friendship. Well, doesn't matter how um, or the reason why I reached out to her, but we are actually speaking and I'm glad that I did reach out to her because it was no shade intended and there was no shade thrown at me. So sometimes when people speak words on social media or just in general we can't always take that to heart and we can't always think that that person is throwing daggers at us you know had I just been um, a bigger person or not even a bigger person but a woman enough woman enough to just approach her or basically approach her via phone then I would have known this from the start and I wouldn't have lost my friend for like almost two years so you know I, I hate the fact that I wasn't able to speak to her and I hate the fact that I wasn't able to be woman enough to call her and reach out to her and ask her like you know are you talking about me or you know whatever but I'm glad that you know she has such an open heart that we are friends still to this day and I'm so glad for that you know it's hard when you have friends some of them are good some of them are bad but the ones that are really truly genuine to you you gotta try to keep a hold of them and you got to basically you know be able to be man enough or woman enough to speak to them and that goes the same thing for family as well you know what I'm saying just like Angela's sister you know what I'm saying now the part that fucks me up is Angela she took custody of her sisters two two daughters and two sons so she had four kids two nieces and her two nephews along with her own kids while her sister was in jail for like five years okay now for one she was only 21 at the time when she took on this responsibility that's a lot to be taken on especially at such a young age there are some women out here that are 21 22 and the age goes on that they can't even take care of like one or two children because they're just not responsible enough they just ain't mature enough but for someone like her to take responsibility for her nieces and nephews her older sister's children because her older sister was too busy getting high then I commend her on that now she got her own children she got three children of her own she didn't want to be in the hood no more so she asked her aunt would you keep my kids for 
for like two months so I can find a proper more place for me and my family to live. I didn't want my children to be in this environment. And that's totally understandable. I did the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I left where I was living at in Schenectady, New York to move here. You know, originally I'm from Queens, but I, I did move upstate as I got much older. And, you know, it's it's like hood there as well in certain particular areas. And I was living like up the hood. Now, I, I want it better for my kids. And when we want better for our children, that doesn't in no way make us better than anybody else. That's not what we feel like we're better than anybody else when we want better for our children or we don't want to live in, like, a bad environment. I don't know too many people that do want to live in a bad environment, you know what I'm saying? And for those who do, kudos to them. But for me, I'm not saying I'm better than anybody, but particularly I don't want to live in a bad environment as well. Listen, I got kids, I got grandkids. I want them to be able to go outside and walk to the car with no issues, you know what I'm saying? Go to school with no issues and all that good stuff, you know what I'm saying? So I commend Angela for allowing her children to be elsewhere for 60 days. She then slept in her car, worked 18 hours and went to school. First of all, some people can't even work five hours, let alone 18, okay? So for one, I commend her on that. But the only issue, not the only issue, but her sister Alicia, you know, she got her kids back. After five years in jail, she got her four kids back. And she found out about Angel, um, Angela leaving her children with their aunt Natalia. First of all, Alicia, the drug addict sister or ex-drug addict sister, that was not her business. That was not her place to be calling, you know what I'm saying, Angela out her name, calling all kind of bitches, a bad mother, etc., etc. First of all, who does that? Second of all, how dare you even try to say anything about this young lady who has taken care of your four children for five years? Them kids could have went into the system. They could have went right to foster care, okay? Then what? She would have been mad either way. So you mad that I took care of your kids and you mad that I, or you would have been mad that I didn't take care of your it seems like you cannot please a lot of people and you can't make nobody happy but I tell you what you know what I'm saying don't hold a grudge against people because if you hold a grudge against people and I apologize because the Sun is going in and out um, if you hold grudges against people that's just gonna make you miserable you know I'll be the first to block somebody because I don't tolerate all that bullshit you know what I mean if you want to talk shit to me on social media you want to call me up and talk shit to me if you want to email me text me talk shit to me I'm blocking you on whatever I can block you because I'm not for all the drama and I'm not for all the negative shit however me personally, I don't feel like Angela should have been the one to apologize or to step to her. So you telling people how your sister thinks she's better than people, she's bougie, she um she's a bad mother, she's a bitch, but was she all these things while she was taking care of your four children? Like seriously. Hold on guys. You know what I'm saying? Like we can't hold grudges. The people are gonna say what they wanna say, they're gonna do what they wanna do. However, Alicia when you were in jail and your sister was coming up there with your kids, when she was feeding your kids, clothing them, bathing them, bringing them to all kinds of appointments, bringing them to school, making sure they had their shots and shit, she didn't have a problem with that. But the minute somebody else got something negative to say, she got a problem. You know, I feel like this, Angela, I feel like that's your sister's own guilt. She probably feels some type of way because she wasn't able to be the perfect mother or she wasn't able to be a decent enough mother to take care of her own children. The whole time you taking care of kids, she in jail. She in jail because she was getting high. So that means to tell you that she was out in the world before she got arrested with these four children getting high. Which means you was leaving your kids unattended to. You wasn't really caring for them like that. Because had you been caring for them like that, your ass wouldn't have went to jail. So here's my thing. I really don't feel, Angela, like you need to be the first to apologize. Apologize for what? You know what I'm saying? Why should you have to be the bigger person? The only way you could be the bigger person is this. Unblock her. And just leave it at that. You ain't got to tell nobody you unblocked her. You ain't got to text nobody you unblocked her. You ain't got to put her on social media that you unblocked her. Just unblock her and let's see how your sister take it from there. Because my thing is this. If you tell people that you unblocked her from all contacts, then that's like you saying, well, she can call me now. This is what you do. If she really wants to speak to you, she's going to continuously try to reach you through social media or your phone. So go ahead and unblock her. You know what I'm saying? Unblock her and just leave it at that. You ain't got to send her no message. You ain't got to give her no call. Just unblock her through all the things that you blocked her on and walk away from it. If she call you, 
didn't hear her out. You don't have to get on the phone and be on no rah-rah shit like, ah, nah, nah, nah. Don't do that because you know why? You could be the bigger person by not even arguing with her. Just listen to her. Just listen to her, give her food for thought, whatever. But the shit that's killing me is, so you've been in jail for five years, okay? You just recently got out. Your sister took care of your four children because you was a drug addict. And you just had another baby. I'm sorry, but I'm not against anybody having children. But I feel like this. When you have a problem and you have finally gotten yourself together, and maybe not even finally, because when you come out of jail, you have missed out on a lot in life, okay? You have to get back in the groove of things. And that shit is not easy, and it's not a piece of cake. So for someone to come out and have another baby when they already have four is crazy like why don't you tend to those four that you have take care of them and get your shit really the fuck together you know what i'm saying like 100 percent together get out the fucking hood i mean if you want to be in the hood then that's your business but my thing is this like seriously really get yourself together like get it together sister girl get it the fuck together let me tell you just like i said don't hold no grudge on somebody. When people do evil to you, sometimes you got to think. That's just their nature, and that's just how people are. That's their personality. That's who they are, and that's who they are going to continue to be. It's unfortunate for them that they're like this, but you know what? You cannot change a person. They are who they are, and they, if, especially if they're older, they're going to stay like that. They're not going to change because you want them to change or because you feel some certain type of way. They are not going to change unless they are really ready to change. So my thing is like this. I don't really try to hold grudges against people. If you do dirt to me, then that, okay, fine, whatever. I'm not going to go all out of my way to do dirt to you. And maybe a few years ago, I would be lying to you if I said this. But like I said, I have, I, I'm older now. And just like I said about my, my friend Robin, Love Kiss 99, you know, I... I wish I could take back all the things that I did say, like, you know, oh, I'm not fucking with her, or whatever I said on Real Talk, you know, basically, like, oh, she threw shade at me, or, you know, shit like that. I wish I could take that back, because had I just been woman enough to just call her and say, hey, girl, like, what's going on? What is this this about social media? I feel like you're saying something in regards to me. I would have got the true answer, but instead, I just took it to heart, and I felt some type of way. And it wasn't just that, too. It was just like, a, it was just like you know, she came out to L.A. to go to, like, a YouTube seminar. And she didn't tell me until after she came home. And that kind of hurt the most. That's where I kind of, like, really hurt the most. Because I felt like I would have walked to the next state if I had to. Just to see you. Because I care about you so much like that. And I still do care about her like that. But I should have still been bold enough to say something. You know, with a lot of times when we have people that's really close in our lives, it don't matter if it's friends or family members. When we have people that are so close to us in our lives, it's hard for us to, like, confront them. I, I know for me it is. I don't know about anybody else, but I don't really try to hurt anybody's feelings. And I damn sure don't want to hurt anybody's feelings that, you know, is close to me or I have feelings for. You know what I'm saying? Or I love and I care for. I don't really want to hurt those people's feelings. Now... And when you get to a point like that where it's hard for you to confront the people that are in your life and that you care for, you take certain things certain ways. You take it really, really personal. You know what I mean? And I feel kind of fucked up that I allowed, like, dumb shit, little shit like that to get to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I know the type of person that she is, and she's a very genuine person. And, you know, it sucks because she was like, it still is the bestest friend that I ever could have. You know what I'm saying? When you get older, friends don't come a dime a dozen. You have to weed out a lot of your friends. You know what I'm saying? So, like, my circle has become very small. Like, it's like a dot. You know what I'm saying? And I don't mind not having friends, but the ones that I do have, I cherish the hell out of them. Just like with my friend Rebecca. I felt some type of way towards her because she came out here, we made plans, and she, like, basically ignored me, didn't want to do nothing, ignored me, we, my plans were just, our plans were just diminished, didn't call me, didn't say anything, and I put off a lot of stuff for her, and I felt some type of way, so I just basically just left it alone and stopped speaking to her, and that's what I did. The same thing I did, how I did Robin was the same way I did Rebecca. 
you know, because I have this in my mind, like, you know what, I'm not about to be trying to be your friend and going all out and you don't do the same for me. Like that's, that's sometimes that's my attitude, which is not that, that great. It's kind of fucked up, but that's just my attitude sometimes. But lo and behold, when Rebecca reached out to me like a few months later, she told me what happened. Like it wasn't her fault. She didn't even want to do half the things that she had to do when she came out here. Everything that she was doing while she was out here was all unplanned. And it wasn't even like it was spontaneous. It was things that, you know, other people had did and she had to correct it. So, you know, that as well, I'm glad that she and I speak because I love her just as much as I love Robin. You know what I'm saying? And it's hard to come by really good friends in this world like basically and even to say with relationships in family members when you have a family member just like okay i'll use for example my cousin kenya now you guys know how i went to new york to the rpg show event and um i basically was telling you guys on a real talk how you know she's just miserable and negative she's always finding a negative in people or she just walks around with this attitude all the time all the time all the time all the time and also you know i knew that she was lying to me about getting her jaw broke she tried to say her teeth were pulled but i'm not fucking stupid i do know the truth and to this day i still want to say to her girl we, we really need to have a talk but i did blow up on her in new york because i got tired of her nasty attitude towards strange people that are ordering their food like they're taking too long for you so it gives you the right they're ordering their food and they're trying they're a family of like four people and you're getting an attitude because they're ordering subway sandwiches and they're taking too long for you what makes you so important that you don't have to wait like that and like I ignored that and then she just I just seen the way she was side eyeing people and looking at people and just like this nasty negative attitude you know what I'm saying and then at times I, I thought she was side eyeing me like that but I thought I was bugging out but I, it was confirmed through you know like people that was at the actual event that they did see her side eyeing me as well so you know I just took it to a different level and just basically I went off on her and said what I had to say because for one, I got tired of it. I can't be around somebody that's negative all the time and got a bad attitude or however, you know what I'm saying? But here's the flip side to it. I grew up with Kenya. I love her with all my heart and she's my favorite cousin. Despite her downfalls, despite her flaws or whatever, she is my favorite cousin and I will always love her and I grew up with her. And me and her have had many, like, fallouts, you know what I'm saying? And never so much as she arguing with me because she's not that type. I'm not really sure about how she confronts other people, but she don't ever confront me. And I'm the younger cousin um, by a few years. She don't ever confront me, but I'm quick to lash out at her. And, you know, there have been many times when I stopped speaking to her. There have been many times when I have threatened her, like, you better bring my shit back here. You didn't, t you didn't ask me to take it out of my motherfucking house. So that to me is stealing. Like, you know, and I, or I call her mother and told her mother, you better tell your daughter to bring me my shit. All kind of crazy shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but in the end, the point I'm trying to get you guys to understand is she is my favorite cousin, regardless of her flaws and her bullshit and all of that shit you know what i'm saying and i'm always feel the way i feel about her you know what i mean i'm not gonna allow anybody to talk shit about her just like where our other other cousin keisha who you know she wasn't really in our circle because like i said me and kenya grew up together we lived upstairs and downstairs from each other in the projects you know in the same building so we grew up with each other as cousins we grew up and then we got keisha who grew up in jamaica ab um jamaica new york um, Jamaica Queens we we weren't cool with her she was like on the other side of family we would see her when we would see her but you know she moved in the same town as we did in upstate New York so we became cool with her but we was never like this and then Keisha's the type of person you know she don't bathe she don't wash her kids she don't clean she don't cook she don't do any of that which kind of sucks for a woman but anyway and on top of that you talking about Kenya like a dog and then you go behind my back and talk about me like a dog so I got tired of it you know what i'm saying and like she tried to say some shit about kenya and i just blew it on her and let her know look you bald-headed bitch and all of this shit you and your ratchet ass friends you know shit like that i had to like go off on her 
to this day I don't speak to her because of that shit like and you know what I'm saying like you will not talk about my cousin like that I refuse to allow you to talk about her but I would never hold a grudge against my cousin Kenya for the shit that she has done or the embarrassment of her attitude I wouldn't hold a grudge against her because I love her to death I just put that shit aside and I say what I have to say to you as a mature person um and I will let it go for a while. I, I wasn't going to say anything to her, honestly, but I couldn't take it anymore. So I just, like, blew up. You know what I'm saying? But that goes to say, like, you know, family members can be really tricky, especially the ones that is closest to you. Sometimes you find it hard to say something to them. And sometimes those be the ones that kind of, like, cut you, like, with a knife. But you have to keep in mind that some people don't think before they do shit. They let the emotions in them get the best of them you know what I'm saying and I could say I'm that type of person and maybe not so much as I used to be because so now it takes a little bit longer for someone to piss me off like I mean like maybe not that much longer but certain things I'm not gonna allow bother me let's just say that certain things I'm definitely not going to allow fuck with me and bother me because I just feel like you're not even worth it if you don't like me then that's great you know what I'm saying just don't put your hands on me don't get in my face but if you don't like me that's great if you say whatever you want to say about me that's great too at least I know you're thinking about me because you you had to been thinking about me if you're talking about me. So, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like this with Angela. Just unblock her and just leave it at that. And if she calls you, just be an adult and listen to her. You don't have to repeat anything that she said about you. You know what I'm saying? Because we already know what she said about you and she does too. She may deny it and say she didn't say it, which is going to make the whole shit get worse and it's just going to piss you off. So, just listen to her and hear her out. You ain't got to apologize. You ain't got to be her best buddy. But just listen to her and hear her out. You know what I'm saying? You know what you did for her and you know what you did for her and her children and everybody else knows and you don't even got to mention any of that you know what i'm saying you know what type of mother you are regardless of what you know what i'm saying that's my thing don't allow somebody's negativity fuck with you mentally because life is short and if you allow all that negative shit from other people fuck with you you are going to shorten your lifespan like on some real shit shorten your lifespan don't some people are just not worth it you know even though y'all might have been close listen Listen to what she got to say and then just keep it pushing. Y'all ain't got to be like this after that. You at least you know that you heard her out and you listen to her. And can nobody say nothing different. You know what I'm saying? But never hold like a grudge against people because you know what? That's the worst thing that you can do for yourself is hold a grudge against people. If they piss you off, okay, whatever. And just leave them the fuck alone. You ain't got to be pissed off with them and mad with them and angry with them forever if they feel like they need to apologize to you later on in life or whatever allow them that opportunity to apologize you know what i'm saying allow them that opportunity but if they don't want to then you know what fuck them that's their loss not yours so we're gonna move on to the next one y'all i am so happy with my new teeth um i told you guys why i was getting new teeth because um the dentist that i used to go to he gave me these root canals in the front girls please okay he fucking gave all the teeth in the front that he gave root canals trauma to so but i'm so happy and i'm not done i have to get more crowns on june 12th i go back to get my stitches out and i also go back to get two crowns back here and then i get a partial because i don't have no teeth back there okay those were removed today they were broken off anyway and i also get like um a tooth put right there. A bitch don't have no motherfucking teeth, okay? But at least I ain't just walking around here frying like, yeah, bitch, mm, I'm all put together. Yes. So, I'm happy that I got my new teeth and shit. So, they're all new right here. I just love them. I just love them um, because for one, last year around this time, you know, my teeth were jacked the fuck up and, you know, it is what it is. My teeth separated because I had wisdom teeth pulled. So that's how I got that huge gap in my mouth. And so now at the bottom, they're doing the same. And my teeth at the bottom are actually really good. So what I'm going to do is I could either get braces down here or I can just get crowns. And I don't think I really want to walk around with just braces down here. So I'm just going to get crowns just to straighten them out because they are separating as well because I've had teeth pulled here and in the back so over time they do separate that doesn't happen to everybody but damn 
why has everything always got to happen to a bitch like me? Like, seriously, like, if you ever get your teeth pulled and if you have the option of getting a root canal or getting your tooth pulled, get the fucking root canal, okay? Because it's not that bad. It's It doesn't even hurt like that. Don't listen to the stories of, like, oh, my God, it's horrible. It's not even that bad. Trust me, I've had one, two, three, four, five, six root canals, okay? And I'm about to go get seven... Eight. I think I need um, like I've, I've had enough of them they don't even hurt like that okay but when you get your teeth pulled you do risk your teeth shifting never thought anything like that could happen when they told me that I'm like, eh, whatever. and sure enough it took a few years but that gap got so bad and that's why my teeth were broken off here they were broken off here and on the side for a while for a couple years the reason why I left them like that is because I didn't want the dentist to pull them out and then, then they start moving. You feel me? So now I know you guys are probably like, well, bitch, you just got these pulled. Aren't they going to shift and move? Well, there's no teeth really in the front to shift and move except for this one is the only... Oh, my bad. I have three teeth that are mine that are the originals in the front. Um, yeah, I am probably a little bit scared to have them shift, but... I have a partial that'll be in my mouth, so, because I got to eat, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm, they're not going to move. I just don't know how I'm going to freaking chew my food without, you know, those little nubbies on the top, those little teeth nubbies, they were a little bit useful, you know what I'm saying? They were. So anyway, let's move on to the next one, because, yes, I'm so happy with my new teeth. Like, seriously, they look a lot straighter in the front because these two canine teeth were really tiny. They were really, really tiny. So now they're, like, the perfect size. They don't sit back like they were. So now they're more aligned. Girl, I'm just totally happy. This one is really short, but she and I have been communicating via email. Um, hey, Mrs. April, I married a man on February 22nd of this year. His family moved in. They hurt me, starved me, and assaulted me. And the police did nothing. They robbed my home. They drugged me with needles. I have nightmares every night. Please give me some advice on how to handle this. I can't afford an attorney, but I want justice. My husband is white, and they're with a white supremacist group. I'm scared for my life. Please email me back. So, you know, I email her back, and I'm like, hey, love, I'm sorry. I'm just now seeing this email. I'm going to do a real talk for you today, okay? Please feel free to email me back and, and just put urgent in the subject so I know it's you. So she emails me back, okay? And this is like a couple of hours ago. And she's like, I'm including pictures that you can share. And my name is... I'm just going to call her Fee. And his name is Ryan. Our, you can So because she says you can use my, my name is and his name, our real names, you can share as well. So she said I could share the picture and their real names. But I basically wrote back and told her, you know, hey, love, I won't share your picture because I don't want anyone to know it's you in case someone you know is watching and brings drama to you, which is unsafe. So then she wrote back. She said, I thank you. I didn't think about that. And so the same thing goes about her name. I really don't want to, you know, divulge her name because... I feel the same way. You never know who could be watching. You know, the situation is kind of weird. So basically, Fee is married to this white guy. She's black, okay? She married this white guy back in February 22nd of this year. That's a few months ago. His family moved in with her, and they robbed her, drugged her. You know what I'm saying? Robbed her, drugged her, um, stole, what, what else? Um, starved her, and... She can't afford money for an attorney. Okay, so they robbed her, starved her, assaulted her, hurt her, um, and she's having and drugged her with needles. She's having nightmares every night. Please give me some advice on how to handle this. Now, for one, I, I you know, but and, and then she's saying that she's scared because his family is in a, um, what did she say? Let me see. Hey, Miss April, I married a man February 22nd of this year. His family moved in. They hurt me, starved me, and assaulted me. And the police did nothing. 
They robbed my home. They drugged me with needles. I have nightmares every night. Please give me some advice on how to handle this. I can't afford an attorney, but I want justice. My husband is white and they're with a white supremacist group. I'm scared for my life. Please email me back. So this is the part that kind of like got me. Now, for one, I don't know if this is real or not. I would surely hope it was because I don't really want to be taking the time to be giving advice to someone that's just thinking that this real talk shit is a joke because it's not. But if you are scared for your life, why would you tell me to show your picture with you and your husband and um, give your real names? That wouldn't make any sense to me. But, you know, some people, like she said, she just didn't think about that. Now, for one, you married him in February. How long was you even with the man? I think that if I was with somebody that was of the opposite race as me, as I, I would know that his ass was a fucking um, racist. Okay? I think I would know that shit. Like, wouldn't you guys know that if somebody was with you and you was with him for a certain amount of time, wouldn't you know that they were racist? And if he is with the white supremacist, why did he marry your black ass? That's the part that I'm trying to figure out. So, like, you was the only one that um, he liked out of all the black folk in the world. He just gave you a chance, an opportunity. He just was like, well, I like Fee, so I'm just going to get with her. But all the other Negroes, all the other niggas, because that's how they would say it, I don't like them. Like, I don't, I don't know. That part just doesn't make any sense to me. And if you've been with him for a while, bitch, didn't you know he was a racist? He was part of the KKK or the skinheads or whatever the fucking other race, racial shit terminology there is for these motherfuckers. Did you not know this? Did you not see these signs? Like, if he's part of a, a group like that, what makes you so different from the rest of us niggas okay like i i, I want to know has there ever been a situation where um i'm gonna, I'm gonna google this i should have asked siri but i'm gonna ask google lady i'm gonna ask the google lady black woman marries racist white man Because I really want to see what comes up, you know what I'm saying? Dear white woman, ma married to black men, we didn't give you a black car, okay? My husband's unconscious racism nearly destroyed our marriage. Sexual racism, um, unmarried black woman, okay? So it does interracial marriage. Um, women can be racist too. Dear white woman, interracial relationships, okay? So, um... I'm not finding anything on Google. I think that would be the first thing to pop up about a black woman marrying a white supremacist. Okay, you know what? Let me put that. Let me let me say that. African American woman marries white supremacist. Let's see what shows up. I was a neo-Nazi until I fell in love with a black woman. This was last year, August 29th, 2017. She was a violent neo-Nazi until she fell in love with a black woman. Okay, so this is lesbians. A formerly vicious South Florida. Okay. Let's see. Because I've never heard of such a thing, okay? And the a lady who's talking about her, she has some nerve to be ugh. a formerly vicious South Florida white supremacist learned love trumps hate when an unexpected prison romance with a Jamaican woman helped bust through her vile racism. She told BBC Magazine in an article published Tuesday, we realized we had fallen in love with each other. We were like, how on earth did this happen? The former skinhead Angela King said of her jaw-dropping transition, King, whose story is American History X meets Orange is the New Black, said a loyal group of Jamaican inmates protected her behind bars before she eventually fell for her cellmate. Once a white supremacist gang member, King was sent to the slammer because she and her hate-spewing pals robbed and pistol-whipped a Jewish adult video shop clerk. 
she told BBC. I had tattoos all over my body. I had Vikings tattoos on my chest, a swastika on my middle finger, and side hail on the inside of my bottom lip, which was the Hitler salute. King said of herself at the age of 23, I joined the gang because they accepted my violence and anger without the question. One night in 1998, King and her other gang members got drunk at a bar and went on a violent rampage. She beat up a woman in the bathroom and they sped off to rob the adult video shop, she said. We drove around, all pumped up, and started talking about what a race war would be like in the U.S. We talked about how it was okay to hurt people who aren't like us and we decided to go and find a place to rob. King was later sent to federal detention center in Miami before she, where she became unlikely friends with the Jamaican woman, she said. I was in the recreation, recreation area smoking when a Jamaican woman said to me, hey, do you know how to play cribbage? She said, referring to the card game. She didn't, but the woman taught her how to play and they eventually became close, breaking the racial barriers of prison groups. Soon she was in with the Jamaican gals. Okay, when an article about her court case was printed in a local newspaper threatening to make her a target behind bars, one of the women hid it to protect her. I hadn't really known any people of color before, but here we are these women who asked me difficult questions but treated me with compassion. But later she was moved to a prison in Tallahassee where a different Jamaican woman immediately began to pick on her. People said she had been in violent gangs and was a real badass. One day as I passed, she asked, how do you even get to be like that? She said, referring to her former life as a neo-Nazi. Instead of fighting, I stopped and answered her as fully and honestly as I could. The two women talked and realized they had similar rough lives on the streets. Over time, they became friends, cellmates, and eventually lovers. It was the first serious gay relationship either of them have ever had, she said. So basically, I guess that shit can happen. But you see this situation. Them bitches was in jail, so they ain't nothing but pussy around them. It's not like they had other options, okay? But here we have Fee, who has different options. I'm pretty sure when you first dating somebody, you really don't get to know them. But over time, you finally do. Unless you just met this man at a bar and you just married him overnight. So here's my thing. First of all, all of that racial shit and all of that extra, oh, nigga this, nigga that, honky this, honky that, whatever. I'm not with all of that shit because it's just the skin color. Underneath, we all got the same shit, you know what I'm saying? And ain't nobody better than nobody. However, I don't like the motherfuckers neither that act like they better than those. Okay, meaning the white folks that act like they're better than those. That when I say that, act like they're better than those, I'm talking about the racist white folk, or the racist Asians, or the racist Indians, or the racist blacks. You know what I'm saying? They say black people can't be racist. We could be racist, okay? Because I know, I know black people that don't like white folk. Okay, hello. Okay, or black people that don't like any other race, but they own that's racism, regardless. But here's the thing. I'm really not understanding this whole email. Like, I'm, I'm all there for helping everybody, but I'm feeling like a part of me is like, is this like a joke or something? Because if your husband and his family is in a white supremacist, why are they taking a liking to your black ass? Okay? This is what I'm trying to figure out. What makes you so special that you ain't got to be part of the other nigga lynching? Okay? I'm dead ass serious. Like, what makes you so special be that you don't have to be part of the other Negroes or niggas that been lynched and hung and done all kind of other shit too and been degraded and all kind of shit. So what makes you so special? All I'm saying is this. If this story is true, then you trying to get help and you scared for your life, hunty, the first thing you don't want to do is be showing your picture of you and your husband all booed the fuck up, okay? Second of all, you talking about the police didn't help you and you were drugged and shit, let me tell you something. You don't need a lawyer. What you need is a, a, a good pair of sneakers and a bag. Take your ass and walk out that motherfucking door and take your ass to the domestic violence shelter and get help and get the fuck away from them. You don't need a lawyer for that. Oh, maybe you're thinking about because you married the man. Listen, that's easy to get done. You can get a divorce in no time. Okay, you can do it yourself and you pay cheap. So you don't need a lawyer for that. Trust me, I did my own divorce, and I was divorced. I didn't have a lawyer because I didn't want to pay for one, and they're very pricey. And not only that, but I was divorced within a few months, okay? So the, the most I paid was like three sixty five, and a bitch didn't even pay for that shit. I just never even paid for it. Yeah, I still owe them for that shit. But... You don't need a lawyer. What you need to do is get your bag together when your supremacist white husband ain't home. 
and carry your black ass out the motherfucking door, take you a bus ride, a car ride, a cab ride, and go to a shelter, okay, and get some help. I'm pretty sure you have other family members, and they don't have to live in the area. If this were me, okay, just say this per se was me, okay, which it would never be, but just say this was me. And first of all, I can't even say it wouldn't be me because I just can't be me. But just say it was me, okay, for the purpose of this video. I was married to a white man. And I found out that him and his family was white supremacists. And they them came to my house, they moved in, and then they started um, drugging me and starving me and robbing me and nobody was helping me. I'm going to help my fucking black ass self. A bitch going to leave. I'm going to leave and I'm going to skip my black ass over to the next few states. Not the next state over, but the next few states, okay? That's what I'm going to do. I mean, that's what April's going to do. I'm not going to sit around and wait for money to stack up so that I can afford a lawyer. No, 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 girlfriend. I'm going to take my happy black ass or my non-happy black ass that's about to be happy and I'm going to toodaloo, skip to the next motherfucking town, towns over and find me shelter, okay, and security. And then I'm going to get my life back together. That's what the fuck I would do, okay? And your situation, racism, I, I mean, like, this is hard for me to fathom. Like, I'm trying to figure out, is this really a real email? Like, I don't ever like to knock nobody else's situation because this is a humongous world and everybody got some shit going on. You don't know what the next person could be going through. However, there is not much you can really do but leave, okay? If you're scared for your life, why would you stick around with somebody? Especially if he's a white supremacist. What makes you so special that he ain't gonna want to hurt you and do something to you? What? I mean, is your pussy that motherfucking good? That he don't even see no color. He like, whoa, when the lights is off, everybody black? Man, please, first of all, I don't, I wish you would have gave me more to the story. Like, how long they been together, um, or where did they meet at, or how did she find this shit out? Um, I guess, you know, saying, I, you know, but when I said what makes you so special, I guess she's really not special. I don't even know why I said that, because a part of me does. But I guess she's not really that special to his family, because... They drugged her. They robbed her. They starved her. But your fucking husband was there while they was doing this. He moved their fucking asses in. And he allowed this to take place. So he ain't no better than them. It don't matter if his family is a white supremacist and he's not. That might be the case that he's not a racist, but his family members are. I'm pretty sure he was aware of that. And if that's the case, why the fuck would you move them the fuck up in there around your wife? Like, who does that? You know what I'm saying? So my... Freaking advice to you would be, girl, you know the movie Forrest Gump? Run, Forrest, run! Okay, bitch, run, Felicia, run. Okay. Now, we're going to get on to the next one. <clears throat> Hi, April. I'm a big-ass fan since your first channel. Yes, bitches, I had another channel, okay? When I was first diagnosed with cancer, you helped my wig game, and I was able to get my confidence back and actually step outside. This may be a little long, so please forgive me, but I really want you to understand where I'm coming from. I was diagnosed with cancer in 2008, and ever since then, I have been in and out of the hospitals and had multiple surgeries and treatments and therapies because the cancer had returned twice. All of this while raising a son alone and trying to keep a full-time job in order to have health insurance. Unfortunately, the cancer came back again in March of 2017, and I spent the entire summer in and out of the hospital. One of my friends decided I need to get out and meet people again, possibly date, and she created a profile on a dating app for me. That's the beginning of the end. It was all good and all in fun as you meet some insane characters online. In September of 2017, I met a guy, let's call him Lonnie, and we started texting back and forth and he was pretty cool. I was never trying to meet up, I was just looking to pass time and be entertained by a cool person. He made me laugh and I enjoyed his conversation. After about a month of this, we were video chatting with one another and I was feeling him, so we made a date. Our chemistry was crazy. Perhaps it was because we had been texting for a while, but I felt very comfortable with him. Even more comfortable than the other guys I was dating at the than the other guys I was dating at the time. We guys as in plural, okay? Um 
We began spending damn near every day together. Eventually, I let him spend the night at my home. I know that was my first mistake right there. My son, who was 18 at the time, had only seen me with two people in his entire life, with no one of, with one of them being his father. I say this to say I am a very private person, so it took a lot for me to invite this man into my family. I was taking a huge risk here, but we felt like instant family. Even my mom loved him, and she doesn't like anybody. He worked overnight in the Bronx, so he didn't get off work until 6 a.m. 6 a.m. <clears throat> he then went to school in Manhattan near me at 9 a.m. Get out of school at noon, got out of school at noon, and then back to the Bronx to get his child until the evening. I was like, damn, that's a lot, but we're together now, so whenever I can assist, I will. Remember what it was like being in school and having a young child? His son is four, so I would let him spend a few nights a week at my house. Also, he lived with his parents, so us staying in the Bronx was out. Wait, what? Mm. Also, he lived, Lonnie lived with his parents, so us staying in the Bronx was out. Okay, hold on. Let me see something here. Okay, I'm thinking she had moved in, but she didn't. Okay, so, so yes, I am a fully grown, educated woman with my own condo in Manhattan, dating a guy who has an okay job, MTA, but lives at home with his parents and always crying broke. However, no one is perfect, and we really were happy, so I thought. About a month in, Lonnie was asking about kids. He wanted more. Soon after, I found out I was pregnant. First of all, I have been told by the doctors that I could not have any more children due to all of the cancer. Lonnie was aware of this and his reply was, well, I think we would be great parents and let's try anyway. I was scared to death when I, when I found out. Scared the baby wouldn't be healthy. Scared this was moving too fast. Scared my son, who is now 19, would not be very happy. But Lonnie was so com confident he encouraged me to relax. This was God's plan and his, and whatever issues came up, he we would handle them as a team. I still wasn't feeling it, and I said I would terminate the pregnancy and could try again in a few months. I was worried about chemo still being in my system. After a miscarriage scar, I realized oh uh, after a miscar after a miscarriage scare, I realized oh shit I do want this baby. The thought of losing her brought me to tears. He rubbed my feet and my back hung out with my son and my mom and they were and we were good until I found an earring in the car. Yup, he was cheating with an ex. After I told him to go to hell and get the fuck out of my house, he decided he didn't want the baby anymore. If we were not a couple, okay, oh, he decided he didn't want the baby anymore if we were not a couple. I'll fast forward all the back and forth, but my question to you is, I don't know any of his family personally. Just met two of his brothers really quickly, but not his parents. My choice. He has decided I'm raising this baby without him. Do I send his family an inv invite to my baby shower? Do I introduce myself to them or just leave all alone? I will have a daughter this summer who will grow up with questions. Now, before you go in on what a dumb bitch I have been, please understand I know already. Am I guilty of being gullible? Yes. Am I guilty of wanting love and thinking I deserve it? Yes. I was lied to and bamboozled by this man and I went for it. Side note, I recently sent his parents a letter asking for medical information regarding the baby I left them. I, the, regarding the baby. I left them my phone number. They had him call me and gave me the info, but they never called me themselves. Thank you sincerely for the advice. Well... Damn, Jay, because she didn't give me a name, so I'm going to just call her Jay. So, Jay basically has been going through a lot. Since 2008, you know what I'm saying, she's had cancer. And I thank you for allow allowing me, uh, you being my biggest fan. And also, I'm, I, I'm thankful that my wig videos from back when I first started in 2008 was able to help you. You know what I'm saying? But she has been through so much. Jay has been through so much with chemo and cancer. And then it, it, it left and then it came back again last last summer. It really sucked, you know what I'm saying? And then to just be able to 
get out on her own after all this was a lot like I know I, I, I can't say for me but I know that people that do have cancers they suffer a lot and just for them just for me hearing what she's going through for it to leave and come back that must be hard like I couldn't even want to imagine to have to go through that but I feel her pain because I know that that has to be heart-wrenching and then to meet somebody online and then for them to break her heart and do her dirty like that is just dead ass wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like she kind of like answered my questions. Was she gullible? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Of course you were. You were gullible. You. I'm not. I don't really want to call you a dumb bitch. You know what I'm saying? Because there's enough of them in the world for me to have to even call you that. But I feel like this. Like you know, it's fucked up that men could be so fucking grimy. You know what I'm saying? Grimy and trifling like. Who does that to a woman? Me personally, um, I, I just, I cannot see someone meeting up with somebody and y'all been together for like a few months and then he want to have a baby with you. That's like a red flag right there. Like you, the red flag was you live with your mama and your daddy still like, hello, Hello, we grown ups now. Why is you living with your mama and your daddy? And I'm pretty sure he's the same age as she because she didn't say he wasn't. I'm pretty sure she would have mentioned that he was younger than her. I'm pretty sure she's old enough because she got a 19 year old son, so she can't be that motherfucking young. But there are certain red flags that you just have to like stop and look at and be like, hold up, bitch. That just hit me in my motherfucking hand. I'm not saying that somebody you date have to have everything in the world, but at least if you're a grown up, like in your thirties and forties or whatever, you should at least have your own place. You know what I'm saying? It don't have to be immaculate. It don't have to be no grand, big finale to do, but at least have something. Even if that shit is a room or a studio, have something that you could call your own. Don't be living with your mama and daddy talking about, um, I want to have a baby with you. I think we'd be great parents. I want to have a baby with you. Nigga, you can't even live on your own to be a parent. Shut up. You live with your parents. Shut up. You know what I'm saying? That would be that would be me. Like, for real? You know what I'm saying? Did he did he say all this? Did Lonnie say all this to her to get to get in good? You know what I'm saying? To move in with her? Either way, it don't matter. The, the dude is is just like trifling. Okay, he was cheating on her with his ex. This is the type of person that I think he is, okay? Jay, a user. He gonna skate by and use whoever the fuck he can to get where the fuck he can and, and, and be whoever the fuck he can. A nigga probably tired of living at home with his parents because he can't allow nobody to have sleepovers. He can't have sleepovers at his parents' house, at his mommy, his daddy house. He can't do that regardless of his age. They not allowing him to have sleepovers. But two, okay... He got a kid. Now, was he cheating with his baby mama? It don't even matter who he was cheating with. The whole point is that I'm pretty sure she informed him that she was going through chemo. Because she did say she wanted to have an abortion and terminate the pregnancy because she was scared that chemo was in her system still. So that meant that he knew about the shit. Now, could you be so heartless, so trifling, and so evil to do something like that to someone who is going through shit. Like, who the fuck does that? For one, you shouldn't even be approaching this woman telling her you want to have a baby with her when you know that she is going through major shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's going through some shit. And you have the audacity to want to have a child with her. Now, children are a beautiful thing. They're a blessing. But my concern... For Jay is that she needs to take care of her body and herself. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot for her to have to go through. And the fact that she already has a son who's 19 years old. Now you're starting all over. And you're starting all over with some deadbeat mama and daddy's boys. Who live at home with his mama and daddy. And suck his thumb and hold his blankie at night. I'm just saying. Who the fuck says to a woman. Well you can raise the baby by yourself if we not a couple. Like, that, who does that? Like, so to me, it's like, did you want to have a baby with her? Because you figured that if you had a baby with her, she would let you move the fuck in. Let me tell you something, Jay. When you come across a snake like that, 
you definitely have to take off. You know, snakes bite. You got to kind of like move with ease. But sometimes you can just take off and jet real quick. When a nigga come to you, females, and y'all been together for a couple months, and he talking about he want to marry you or he want to have a baby with you, please let that go in one ear and directly out the other. Don't feed into that bullshit because I'm sorry. These men these days that say shit like, I want to have your baby. I want to have a baby with you. I want to marry you. And y'all been together for like a few months or a year. Nigga, please, okay? Bye. I'm just saying, that's just me. Like, who does that? Who says that? We would be great parents after a few months. You barely even knew him. Now, you called, you, you left a message with his parents to ask him, you know, if there's any type of medical history you could be concerned, you should be concerned about because you're having this baby. They didn't even text you back. They didn't even call you. They had Lonnie do it. Okay, that's fine. No big deal. But here's the thing. Sweetheart, this is just me, and this is just me in general. When I was pregnant with my daughter, Tati, okay, I found out um, that her father was cheating on me. Now, this is the sucky thing. We weren't together for no year. That's why I'm telling her it was stupid because I've already been through this. We were together for a few months. He didn't say to me he wanted to, um, we would be great parents. I just ended up pregnant. Okay. And, um, I can't remember if he was, he was happy about the situation. So he, so that's the front that he put on. I don't really know. But I found out he was cheating on me with the ratchet. Okay. And, um, you know, it, it bothered me, but it is what it is. Now, him and his, he lived at home with his mama, okay? But mind you, I was in like 22, 21 at the time, 22, 20, um, I was like 21, 22. Um, I had never met his family and I never met his mother either, okay? And I did just meet his brother and his raggedy ass cousin and some of his other cousins. However, he and I had a falling out because he cheated on me with the ratchet. Now, I never got to speak to his mother or meet her until one day out in public when I seen him and I was pregnant. And I can't remember if it was at a Walmart or at the mall. I cannot remember or Kmart or something like that. But I seen him out in public with his mother. I didn't know it was his mother. At that point, it didn't even matter to me. All I know is I called him out and basically let him have it in front of his mother. And she was the one who told me that, you know, she's his mother. I shouldn't carry on like that. Well, needless to say, um, you know, I never got to meet her because she passed away. Um, I think she passed away of HIV. She passed away of HIV, okay? And, you know, she never got to meet my daughter, Tati was born exactly a month later at the same time his mother passed away. Tati was born April 19th and his mother died March 19th, okay? So, you know, I didn't invite any of them to any kind of gatherings that I had. I didn't do any of that, you know what I'm saying? She knew, his mother knew that I was having a baby. She didn't reach out to me. She didn't say anything to me. And I was fine with that because you know why? It's not your place. You don't have to. I'm not going to go out of my way. I'm not going to extend my fucking hand to people that don't want to be bothered with me. If Lonnie don't want to be bothered with you, sweetheart, trust me. I'm pretty sure he done said some fuck shit about you to his mother and his father that they don't want to be bothered. And I say this because he still live at home. I'm pretty sure that they listen to him and they go off of whatever he says. They probably baby him because he still live at home. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't give two fucks if I didn't ever speak to that motherfucker again. Your daughter, yeah, you have to explain to her where her deadbeat father is. You also will have to explain to her why she doesn't have a grandmother on his side or whatever. It's no big deal, you know what I'm saying? People's family members, they don't always have to extend their hands and welcome you into their family. You don't have to do that. That's the one thing that I don't do. If you don't tell your family members about me 
or whatever. Let me tell you something. I'm not going all out of my way to extend my motherfucking home and welcome invite to you. I'm, why would you, this is the thing, why would you even want to invite his family to your baby shower? That would be like the most awkward, uncomfortable situation that there is. I'm pretty sure that people at your baby shower is going to be mentioning how he is a deadbeat. He ain't shit for what he did to you in your time of need. You don't need them people sitting there hearing that shit and then it, it just becomes real awkward and then some drama might pop up. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. It's best to avoid all the bullshit you can while you're pregnant. If these people want to come around, then, you know what I'm saying, spoon feed them, spoon feed them. Meaning, don't jump at the opportunity like, oh my God, jump into the fire. You don't never know what somebody is up to. Plus, you don't even know these motherfuckers, okay? Here's my thing. Spoon feed they asses. If they if they send you a text message and they say, so we, we hear we're going to be grandparents, then you know you can reply back to them. You don't have to be disrespectful because they're older. But let me tell you this much. Don't invite them to your baby shower. This is your baby shower. This is time for you to have a good time and relax and enjoy your family members and friends. The people that care about you. Fuck him and his fucking family. Fuck his raggedy ass, okay? Fuck his raggedy ass. If you want to be so bold and manly to walk out on you while you're pregnant and you going through shit, let the nigga burn in hell, okay? His ass gonna burn in hell. Trust and believe. Karma is a motherfucker. Some of y'all bitches swear that that shit does not hit you and bite you in the ass, but I guarantee you, if you do some dirt to somebody, it might not happen to you right away, but I promise you, that shit is gonna bite you in your ass real motherfucking quick, okay, when you least expect that shit. So don't feel like you can do dirt to motherfuckers and then, you know what I'm saying, you walk away like, oh, okay, I, I got away with this shit. Nah, bitch. What goes around comes back around. And the same shit gonna happen to Lonnie. You ain't got to fucking worry about his family. You ain't got to worry about him. You didn't carry it on and you done did what you had to do. Now you have another baby. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like it's it's meant to be for you, then it's meant to be for you. But you don't need nobody allowing them to fucking stress you the fuck out in your time of need. Point blank period. I know if it were me, let me tell you something. If your parents didn't like me, I could get two fucks. Meaning a bitch don't give a fuck. I don't care. If you and your family don't like me, trust me when I tell you, it's the least of my motherfucking worries, okay? A bitch still gonna wake up, a bitch still gonna look cute, I'm still gonna get dressed, I'm still gonna have to pay these motherfucking bills, and make wigs, make videos, and take care of these motherfucking kids. So, if your family don't like my fucking punk ass, then a bitch could care less, okay? Point blank. I'm not here for all of that bullshit, and neither should you be. So, with that being said, I wish you the very best, and the thing that I need you to do is to take care of yourself mentally and physically. You don't need these people bringing any type of negativity around you because you're already going through shit, you know what I'm saying? You're pregnant and you're going through cancer and treatments. You don't need any extra foolishness in your life. Sometimes we have to step away from the negativity just so that we can have positive vibes at all times. And with that being said, you guys, let um, Jay know how you feel about the whole situation. Let all the young ladies in this email or this real talk know how you feel about the situation. On that note, I'm going to go because my fucking mouth is hurting. And I'm going to go take me some aspirins. I'm going to go edit this video and hopefully edit the video to this way. And I will see you guys on another note. So stay deep and deep delicious. Be sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up. Let me know what you think of this pink hair. I think I like it better like this because, I don't know. Plus it's dumb hot in this motherfucking room. So peace. <laughs> What? Mm. Damn. Mm. 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 Mm.